the early 1990s, the two Fire Emblem games on the Famicom introduced Japanese gamers to the world of tactical RPGs. Never before had the traditional RPG format been blended so successfully with grid-based tabletop war games. Fire Emblem truly began the tactical RPG subgenre as we know it, and the series influenced countless games that came after it. After the Super Famicom was released in Japan, Intelligent Systems began work on the third Fire Emblem title, which was sure to take advantage of the new hardware. Fire Emblem Mystery of the Emblem was released in 1994, and it was the biggest step forward for the franchise yet. The SNES version is fully playable with a translation patch, which I'll include in a link in the description. Fire Emblem Mystery of the Emblem is set on the continent of Arcania. Oddly enough, the story is split into two overarching sections called books. Book 1 is essentially a remake of Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light, the first Fire Emblem game on the Famicom, and Book 2 is a new story that takes place two years after the events of Book 1. Now I won't waste time retelling the story of Book 1, but in Book 2, the player again takes the role of Marth. His close ally Hardin now sits on the throne of Arcania but his recent drive for military conquest makes Marth suspicious of his motives. After learning of the king's corruption, Marth retrieves the Fire Emblem and is branded a traitor. Most of the story deals with Marth's quest to restore peace to the land and track down the true source of the king's madness. Like the other Fire Emblem games, battles take place on an overhead grid. In fact, this was the series that practically invented the grid in the first place. One of the best things this one did though was use colored cells on the map to show possible places for units to move to. Now this is a facet so taken for granted today and used in many modern tactical RPGs, but it really was a revolutionary feature back then. Unfortunately, Mystery of the Emblem doesn't include similar cell shading for attack ranges, so you have to do a little experimentation to understand unit attack distances. Among the most fun and memorable elements of Mystery of the Emblem are the individual combat scenes where clashing units exchange blows on a separate and unique screen. Even though the graphics are much less impressive than in some later era SNES RPGs, there's something incredibly fun about just watching Marth march across the screen and swing his sword at his adversaries. The enemy sprites were actually really well done too, especially the bosses. This was a distinct and fun way to see characters exchanging blows and gaining experience. This was also one of the most unforgettable parts of the original Fire Emblem game, so I'm glad they resurrected it here. Mystery of the Emblem also added the character support system into the series, an innovation that's been incorporated into every single Fire Emblem game since. What this means is that the statistics of units with a close storyline relationship are enhanced, so long as they remain close to each other on the battlefield. The player can use this to their advantage in order to overcome tough enemies, or plan a sound defense against a greater number of enemies. This mechanic isn't very apparent to the average player, but I do think it was a fun and creative dynamic that was pretty novel for the time. Another notable part of Mystery of the Emblem involves inventory management. In the first Fire Emblem game, you had to go through the excruciating process of passing items between characters within battles, and it was an absolute nightmare. However, in Mystery of the Emblem, you can organize inventory between units in a user-friendly menu between battles. Sure, it isn't as convenient as a shared inventory, and each unit only has 8 slots, but this was a big step forward. Now, I do have to address the title's difficulty. I would go as far as to say that Mystery of the Emblem is extremely challenging, and you can really get crushed unless you carefully plan your moves. Because each character's skill with weapons is such an important factor in this game, a simple change in weapons can be the difference between victory and defeat. But honestly, the difficulty is no joke. It's compounded by the game's character growth system also, because certain units won't gain as much power upon level up relative to other units. There's really not a great way to play around it unless you know the intricacies. You also really have to use terrain, unit placement, and matchups to your advantage to triumph here. With over 60 tracks, the soundtrack of Mystery of the Emblem is pretty impressive for the time. The title's main theme is definitely the one I remembered most after picking up the game again after so many years. It was done by Yuka Sujiyoko, the same composer from the first two Fire Emblem games, who went on to work on all future Fire Emblem games as well. 
you'll hear a lot of horn and drum bass songs, which makes sense given that this is a war game. It's a solid soundtrack, but I can't really say it rises to the level of Nobuo Uematsu or Yasunori Mitsuda's best work, but hey, very few soundtracks ever do. If you've only heard the soundtracks to localized RPGs on the SNES though, I think you'll really enjoy it. In 2010, this game was released for the Nintendo DS as Fire Emblem New Mystery of the Emblem. It wasn't released in North America either, but there is a translation patch for that version as well. It did add a few menu improvements, character-specific dialogue scenes, a polished translation, and some other redeemable features, but I have to admit, I preferred the translated SNES version, so I didn't play this one very much. I also don't think two screens are even necessary for a game like this, but hey, it's a perfectly respectable version that many people do like. So bravo to that. When it comes down to it, Fire Emblem Mystery the Emblem is the perfect game for fans of tactical RPGs. So if you like games like Tactics Ogre, Bahamut Lagoon, the Langrisser games, or Final Fantasy Tactics, I think you'll really dig this one also. Its difficulty can be worse than frustrating, but it's extremely rewarding as well, and it'll give you 40 plus hours of fun if you press through it. The game's story was even better than I expected, with the conflict between loyalty and morality the centerpiece of the tale. It's a shame North America hasn't gotten this one in an official capacity, but that's the unfortunate case with lots of RPGs from this time. Many Fire Emblem fans consider this one of the best games in the series, and after revisiting it after so long, I can see why. It definitely used some of the franchise's most defining characteristics in a fun way, and it stands the test of time. I personally can't say it's as good as Genealogy of the Holy War, the game that followed this one, but it's certainly admirable in its own right. But what do you think? If you played Fire Emblem Mystery of the Emblem, how do you think it stacks up to the other Fire Emblem games? Let me know in a comment below. Like, subscribe, and click the bell for more retro gaming content, and join my Discord community linked in the description. And if you like the content I make, please consider supporting my channel via YouTube's join feature to receive member exclusives, such as advanced videos and complete video transcripts.